it's very early in the morning. I feel crusty. I look crusty. But that's because I'm about to start doing plant chores. So I have a ton of stuff to do today. Um, and I thought I would take you along with me while I do those things and also answer questions that I got from TikTok. Um, well, I'm doing stuff. So I have stuff to do outside and it'll be kind of loud outside because it's trash day. So I'll probably do a voiceover for that part. Um, and I'm gonna start by writing down all of the things that I need to do while I drink my coffee. Um, if you wanted to know what I drink in the morning, I have been making cold brew concentrate myself. And then I mix in vanilla oat milk by Planet Oat. Um, I never heard of them before, I just picked it up at the grocery store. Um, and then I have this creme brulee creamer by Silk. Um, and yeah, if you see the quality of the video change like during the course of the video, that's because I'm on my iPhone right now because my camera's dead. So once my camera charges, I'll be using my actual real camera that I use for filming. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna start with writing down everything that I need to do, cause I think that'll help me focus a little bit more. Um, but I'm definitely gonna start with all the stuff that I have to do outside, which is repotting my huge clay medallion, which if you haven't seen that, I did a house plant tour video um, and it's in there. I got it from Walmart. That's the big like major thing that I've been needing to do. And then my outside plants have just been looking really crusty. Like they've been growing, but there's a lot of like dead leaves that I just haven't picked up um, that I need to clean up. And I'm gonna do that today. And I'm taking you along with me and answer questions from TikTok. Um, so yeah. So my initial thought process when getting ready to do this video was that I would actually be able to do plant chores and pick up my phone and read the questions. However, I didn't think about how messy um, everything was gonna be. So I'm opting to do a voiceover instead for this Q&A while I am doing plant chores. And I'll explain a little bit about what I am doing and answer questions. First chore of the day is gonna be to make a new soil mix. So I'm experimenting a lot with different soil mixtures just to see what I like and what my plants like. So I mixed in some old LECA. Well, it's not old, but I had already prepared it maybe like two weeks ago. So it's already cleansed and soaked and everything. And then some perlite, make sure you wear a mask with perlite, don't be like me. And then some orchid mix. Um, and when I got this, I swear it said orchid bark, not orchid mix. Cause I was, I wanted to get bark, but then I didn't get bark and I got the mix. Um, but anyways, it's fine. And then I am just mixing in some garden soil as well. So I'm gonna test this out on a few of my plants and see what they like. Now we're gonna dive into the first question. This is from R. Treaky. I hope I said that right. They asked, what are some of the plants that first got me into the hobby? So my very first plant was a peace lily in 2017. Um, and the story behind me even getting my first plant was that I actually wanted to get a fish for my 25th birthday. Um, and I told my mom about it and she said, well, what if you've got a plant? And I said, okay, I could try that out. And now I have <laughs> over 200 uh, house plants. Um, so the peace lily was my first plant and then I got two golden pothos. They were huge and gorgeous. And then I had a snake plant. I feel like those are the classic starter plants and I always love them. What you're seeing here is me cleaning up my outside plants. So I have my philodendron hope outside and I'm gonna answer a question that directly relates to my philodendron hope. Um, and then I have some elephant ears, a tradescantia, and I think a baby spider plant. Um, and I'm just cleaning up the leaves and cleaning out the area because I kind of have neglected it um, and it just needs a little spruce up and some watering. So this next question is from Hey Foxface. They asked how to get rid of thrips. So when I initially saw this question, I was trying to think back to if I ever had thrips because I feel like I would remember. I have dealt with spider mites and fungus gnats um, and things of that nature and I've had mealy bugs before but I didn't realize until I was thinking about my philodendron hope that I did have thrips and I just didn't know what it was at the time because it was something that I'd never seen before on my own plants so what I did specifically for this plant was I gave it a, an alcohol and water like diluted alcohol treatment I used 91% alcohol which they say you're supposed to use less but that's what I had on hand 
I mixed up the mixture in a spray bottle, sprayed down all of my leaves and wiped it with a paper towel. I didn't use my regular rag that I usually use when I'm cleaning leaves because this was kind of for a different situation. And then I also um, saturated the soil with um, a neem oil mixture, gave it a shower, like did all this stuff, isolated it for two weeks and then they were still there. So I decided to kick this plant outside into my backyard and I cut off the leaves that were too far gone, gave it a, another treatment of the alcohol solution and the neem oil in like in the water. Um, and I've just left it outside and I feel like the Texas sun has burnt those pests to a crisp which I'm thankful for because the plant is thriving now. It's given me five new leaves um, this summer alone, which it was kind of dormant. It wasn't growing really at all indoors. It loves it outside. Um, so I'm gonna keep it out there for as long as I possibly can. And yeah, that's the only plant, knock on wood, that uh, I've had thrips on. And that treatment was definitely something I had to do more than once. So I think that kind of helped it in addition to putting it outside. Now onto my biggest chore of the day, which was repotting my Calathea medallion that I got from Walmart for 20 bucks. I talk about this plant a little bit in my house plant tour video, which I will put in the cards at the top of this video. This was a big job and I kind of waited a little bit longer than I expected to, but I knew it needed a repot with some fresh soil. And yeah, so that's what we're doing in this part of the video. The next question comes from JJS Plants and they asked, how do you maintain your mental health, run a business and take care of all your plants? I feel like for me, one of the biggest things that helps me maintain my mental health is my support system. I have really great friends and my mother and my grandmother and I talk to at least one of them every single day and something that I feel like also helps a lot is that they fully support me in whatever I do and they always encourage me and always like give me that hype and that helps me push forward especially when I'm inside my own head and I'm thinking I don't know if this is going to work or if people are going to like this or this is going to go the way that I'm planning they're there to really encourage me and help me realize that I literally can do anything I want and that type of support system I feel like is one of the reasons why I am where I'm at today. I always have people around me that are super supportive in what I'm doing, but also aren't afraid to call me out on my shit, which I feel like you need a balance of both. And I have that in the people in my life. Um, something else that helps me is that I'm, I'm the type of person who I'm very in my head. I think a lot of thoughts all the time and writing those thoughts down or typing them out on the computer, getting them outside of my head helps me really, uh, I guess really let things flow the way that they're meant to because if they're stuffed inside of my head, they're kind of just bouncing off my brain. But when I get them outside of my head, I can really dissect them and see them for what they are, whether they're positive, negative, if it's a business idea, content idea, if it's just me thinking about something random, it doesn't matter what it is getting it outside of my head helps a lot like helps a lot um and as for plants i don't really feel as overwhelmed as i have been in the past with plants i feel like i used to kind of take it like a little too seriously not seriously but i would feel very <laughs> upset if things didn't go my way but that isn't just for plants it was like everything in my life and now i feel like i have a more chill approach and I feel like I'm connected to everything, but I'm not attached to everything. And that has really helped transform my mindset into the person that I want to be, the business that I want to run, um, the people that I have around me, and how I want to use my platforms. And this is the last like major section of plant chores in the video. I'm back upstairs in my plant room and I am doing a lot of stuff in here. I am propping my philodendron domesticum for my pop-up that I am a part of and that'll be at the end of September, September 25th. Um, and I'm doing a lot of other stuff, just basically checking all of the plants that I will be having um, in the store and kind of showing them to you. 
So you can see which ones that you are gonna pick out for the launch, that is September 18th. Mark that on your calendars. And we have other stuff coming as well, which I'm really excited about. But that's all we're doing upstairs in the plant room. And I'm gonna answer the rest of the questions. Next question comes from Jerome the Garden Gnome. And they asked, bottom watering versus top watering. I am a firm believer that this is totally up to the plant person. It is whatever is easiest for you, whatever is accessible and whatever you like. There are benefits to both and I think it just depends on the person. I do both types of watering. It honestly just depends on the mood. Now I will say with bottom watering, it's very trendy. That's not the word that I wanna use, but that's the word I'm gonna use. And Something that has occurred with me before with bottom watering is that the water did not get all the way up to like the highest parts of the plant and the plant ended up drying out a lot. Uh, or I thought the plant was dry because of touching it from the top and then I eventually overwatered it. But I will say I do think it works really well with smaller plants because when you're bo bottom watering, you can really see the soil be saturated quicker. And I also use clear containers, so that kind of helps me a lot with knowing where the water is at, how hydrated a plant is, and all of that jazz. I love clear containers. Next question comes from Plant Cubes, and they asked, what were your biggest struggles starting a plant shop? So for me, I would have to say, um, one of them was that I was procrastinating. I had the name Oops I Planted Again probably a year to two years before I ever launched. Um, I always knew that I wanted to do something plant related. I just didn't know what that was going to look like and I never found the perfect time. But one day I was on Twitter and I follow uh, Ariana Dantone. I am probably butchering their last name. But they had started um, selling plants and they were like, just start doing stuff. Don't wait around for things to be perfect. Like just start doing it. You never know um, how it's gonna go. And that kind of kicked my butt in a gear and I made my first TikTok about my plant shop journey and it kind of took off from there. Um, another struggle that I had was in shipping because there really wasn't any information out there on shipping plants or even like having a plant business. Um, so shipping was another really big struggle. Now I feel like I have a method that feels good and works for me and is efficient, but I'm still consistently learning and growing through this process. Um, and I think another struggle for me, I kind of said it earlier before, but there really wasn't any information on how to start this specific type of venture in your life. Usually you can kind of YouTube and Google your way into figuring out how to do things, but this was so specific that there really wasn't a ton of information. Um, so basically a lot of trial and error. Um, but I feel like I'm at a good place and I'm really excited for this next relaunch and to kind of push the envelope further and also give people information on how um, how everything works behind the scenes because I like to be as transparent as possible. Next question comes from U-R-M-O-M-L-O-L-Z-1 um, and they asked, what are your tips for starting a plant shop and how many plants should you have to start and that they want to start one this year? My first uh, tip would be to just start <laughs> don't think too much about it because if you're like me and you think about every single thing then you're gonna get you're gonna procrastinate until everything's perfect and nothing is ever gonna be perfect and then you know you won't put your stuff out to the world and somebody may you know need that thing that you have that special spark that you have um I would say me I really like naming things so like the name gets me hype and gets me excited to do other things. So once I had the name Oops I Planted Again, when I first even had it, I got like the Instagram, I bought my domain, um, and I got the name on all social media platforms so that it's mine. Um, and then what else? I would say propagate and grow as many plants that you feel comfortable with managing. Um, I think my first launch, like when I first opened, I didn't have more than 15 plants that I had grown um, from cuttings. 
and that was really easy for me to maintain and manage and work with shipping um, and I didn't really promote my business that much when I started. I kind of used the built-in search feature that was with Etsy. Um, so I do like Etsy for that and I feel like it was a good start even though I'm moving to my own domain with Oops I Planted Again. Um, so that's all my tips that I would say. Just start, um, work on what feels comfortable, like the amount of plants that you feel comfortable, comfortable with managing. And then also with like having those social media platforms, I would say pick one that you feel the most comfortable with and just start showing up as yourself. I pick TikTok because I love making videos and I feel like it's easier on TikTok to be seen by a vast amount of people than other social media platforms quickly. Um, TikTok has been the pretty much the number one reason why I've been able to have so many sales on Etsy. Um, and I would definitely say that whatever you feel the most comfortable doing is the platform where you should focus on. Not saying that you can't focus on a bunch of platforms, but it's just easier to like put most of your energy into the one where you feel like you can show up on a consistent basis. And you don't actively have to promote yourself like all the time because I really didn't. I just talked about my love of plants and I would share stuff from the plant store occasionally. Um, but I really just engaged with my audience and I just shared my love of plants. I made funny videos, informational videos, answering questions, um, things of that nature. So that's what I would say. This last question is from Gorgeous Cancer and they asked, what's your opinion on variegated plants and their price? Um, I actually answered this question a little bit on TikTok a while ago. Um, and basically what I said was that variegated plants are just a preference. People think they're pretty and that's what they like. Um, and there's no real significance to a variegated plant. It doesn't make it better in my opinion. I just think that, that some people put variegated plants on a higher pedestal and that's their prerogative. And as far as price go, it's really about the market that people are willing to pay the price for a plant and the people who grow the plants and are you know sending those plants out to shops and nurseries and all that jazz those people ha mark up the price because they have to recoup their initial investment that's what I'm trying to say so basically I mean people are willing to buy at that price so that's why people sell at that price I want to thank you so much for watching today's video and if you have any other questions at all, drop them in the comments below and I will see you in the next video.